Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about all the accessories I've added to my Indian Scout 60 so far. So let's go ahead and roll the video. You think you know me. Burn it down! Alright everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, we're going to get going on this. My 60 is a 2018 I'm going into my fourth season of riding this bike. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this because I've done several upgrades and modifications to this bike. I think first of all, we're gonna start off with the performance upgrades. Okay, the first one, you can't see it, but I have an SNS intake underneath the gas tank. I have a video for that if you wanna go ahead and check it out. I also have, on this side, upgraded to the Crusher Maverick exhaust. Not only does that reduce weight, but it also has better flow and way better sound than the stock Indian Scout Indian Scout 60 exhaust. And the final performance upgrade I have is the DinoJet PV3 tuner. Um, those three things combined actually gave me the power of the standard Scout. All right, now let's talk about the next thing. One of the first things I did as a safety upgrade several years ago, because I like to ride in the dark quite a bit, is this SunPi LED headlight. Now, LED headlights are the best, one of the best upgrades you can make as far as vision on your Indian Scout, Scout 60 or Bobber, or any bike for that matter. Now, the SunPi is actually a $40 headlight off of Amazon. So, you don't have to go out and spend $100, $200, even $400 on a headlight upgrade to make your bike safer. All right, now the next thing I want to talk about is probably the biggest thing for me because I ride this bike as a touring bike. It's not your typical touring bike being an Indian Scout. It's generally supposed to be shorter distance rides. Basically, that's the way they designed it. But in my case, I designed it to be a two-up touring bike that I've taken to several states across the country. But let's go ahead and talk about the upgrades I did to make this more of a touring, more comfortable touring bike. First of all, one of the first upgrades I did, I replaced the stock seat with a Mustang seat, solo seat. I also added the passenger seat, the backrest, and as you can see here, I have a full-length sheepskin that I purchased off of Amazon. And honestly, this is just a sheep, real sheepskin rug. It's not one of those ones where you got to go to like Alaska Leather or one of these other companies that say they make a motorcycle sheepskin cover. This is half the price of what you would pay for a sheepskin cover that would only go from the here to here. And basically all I did was cut a hole in it and put my backrest through, and then I have one bungee cord holding it down. You really don't need to spend the extra money, folks. It's the same material. They're just trying to make money off of saying it's motorcycle related. Uh, the next thing I did for comfort, this is a Captain Itch crotch cooler. It keeps the hot air from coming up and hitting you while you're on the bike riding. And it works really well, say you get caught in construction somewhere. Yes, this is a water-cooled bike, but it still gets hot like any other bike. Not quite as much as like an air-cooled bike would be. But this saves a lot of the heat from coming up and actually hitting you in that crotch area. Hence the reason it's called a crotch cooler. Uh, the next upgrade I made, as you can see, are these Dean Speed 12-inch handlebars. That actually makes for more of a comfortable riding position for me. And of course, I put the Avon memory foam grips, which are excellent because Avon actually sends you this whole grip on the throttle sleeve. You do not have to fight to get it off there. Now, I already did an upgrade on my handlebars. I had the Avon grips previously on the stock handlebars, so I just went with a whole nother set. One of the best purchases I ever made, one of the first purchases I made right when I bought it from the dealership, so I went ahead and did it again. Just very convenient as far as comfort. They are a memory foam grip. They work great. And I will say finally one of the upgrades I made that makes us a really comfortable long distance touring bike that the stock Scouts don't come with, cruise control. Yes, I have electronic cruise control from MC Cruise on this, which allows me to relax my hand. Just like any other straight up touring bike out there, I got cruise control. 
and it's actually mounted on the left side. Believe it or not, I believe that's a better mounting system than most stock bikes have because you can leave your hand on the throttle when you're setting it and you could set it with your left hand and then you're set to go. And I've already tested this out. I did a video on the install for that. Uh, I just did it, came back from a trip about a month ago to Virginia, which was the majority of highway riding. So this was absolutely perfect. You could set your speed. I actually got better gas mileage by having that and I kept myself right in the 70, 72 mile an hour range for the whole 460 mile trip. So that was a great upgrade. Also, as far as comfort goes, as you all know, they have Scout, Scout 60, Scout Bobbers, whatever. Stock, ex stock uh, shocks suck. Yes, people tell you all the time you can adjust them. I adjusted them. Being someone that's 240 pounds, you can adjust the stock shocks all you want. They are not going to help. You got to figure you're adding your body weight. And if you put luggage on here like I do, I carry a large bag on here on top of the saddle bags. You're going to need all the weight you can get, especially if you're going on a long trip and you like to load down your gear. Um, one of the other things when I travel too, I don't have it on the bike here today, but I have a Garmin motorcycle GPS, which comes in handy because sometimes you can't just use your phone for GPS, especially if it rains out. I found that out the hard way last year when I had a meetup and we got caught in torrential downpours and my phone got wet. I could not use it for maps anymore. But I also do have the Kyriakon phone mount. So that way, I like to listen to music. I like to be able to listen through a Cardo headset music. If somebody calls me or if I need to talk to somebody on the ride, that's what that's there for. And like I said, I like to travel a lot. So I have these Viking bags, hard saddle bags with the easy bracket mount. And finally, for carrying luggage, this is the Dean Speed 24 inch double arch sissy bar with the six pack rack now i don't use the rack very often it's there if i do need it but generally i carry a bag that will sit on there and this thing has been absolutely absolutely excellent now before that i had the indian factory uh sissy bar and rack worked fine for a small bag but really was not tall enough for the bag i needed the bag i have comes up to about yay high this actually strat has uh it's better to strap it down. And of course, if you're gonna do the Viking hard bags like this that mount on here, you have to get the Slim Scout uh, sissy bar for it. Cause otherwise it becomes, they have the rods and you have to do a whole different type of setup for the bike. Couple other things I like to mention too. The stock Scout 60 doesn't come with this cover over here. So I added that. That was one of the first things I ever did. Floorboards, the bike comes with PEG standard. I was having issues with actual calf cramps when I go out and ride 200 miles. These offer a lot more space so you can move your feet forward and back. You can almost do like mid controls and forward controls. And of course I've got the sissy bar, not the sissy bar, sorry, the crash bars. I've got highway mounts and I also upgraded to the Indian uh, brake peg and also foot uh, shift peg because the stock ones are really so small and I have some big ass feet. My big ass feet, I couldn't, uh, I had a hard time finding that when I was riding down the highway to shift and stuff. But that, as far as I know, is all the upgrades I've done so far. Uh, I still have a few more upgrades. Of course, I have this windshield on here too. This is a Memphis Fats. Uh, this is the biggest windshield Memphis Shades makes outside of actually doing a Batwing fairing. Like you can see, I've modified mine with black paint and some pinstripe. And of course, stickers from some of the trips, my YouTube channel stickers just all the places I've been over the years on the bike and it's only been my fourth year riding so but this is my Indian Scout 60 with upgrades let you take another look at it one more time I'll walk around if anybody does have any questions of what other add-ons you could possibly do leave me a comment down below all right everybody thanks for checking out my video bye for now